If you lose, you have to go up and give Johnny Sexton a kiss or something. I don't know. You <laughs> oh have to God. go over and befriend him. Well, hello and welcome back to our 20th episode of Rugby Pass Offload with me, Christina Mahan. And today I'm joined by Ryan Wilson, Simon Zebo, and our very special guest, Mr. Finn Russell. Welcome to the show, Finn. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. And how are you guys? Great, thank you. Great. You can't nod your head on a podcast, Ryan. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not nodding towards this. Yeah, go on, Sam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the alley -oop. I got it. Good man. No, I'm good. Back from Zebra. It was a uh, yeah, ropey, one, ropey one at the beginning, but we managed to claw our way back and win that one. Tough one for us. You boys had an easy one at the weekend, didn't you? Yeah, two on away was pretty easy, yeah. <laughs> Complete opposite. Different, yeah, slightly different standard of uh, opposition for you boys. It's a little bit harder in our league, so <laughs> get the easy ones. We'll take the hard ones. <laughs> Finn, with the Six Nations returning this weekend, what's the feeling been like in camp ahead of the Irish game? Um, it's been quite pretty good. You know, we had a first session just to, um, just today. Um, but now it's pretty positive. Obviously, we didn't play against France, so we've had a few weeks off um, from playing together. But now it's, it's been pretty positive. We know Ireland are a decent team, um, so we're going to have to obviously be at our best. But we're, we're confident. We've had a, a good a good start to the tournament, although we got beaten by Wales. But um, We've been playing some pretty good rugby, and um, so I think we're looking to kind of build on that and keep the momentum going that we managed to, to get from the start. Have you been a bit surprised by how rigid Ireland have been this campaign? Nah, not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why? I think Ireland are well for me. They're they're quite. I chat to Zebes and stuff as well, and um, I think you know the way they play and the way they do things. It's quite you know, very structured and rigid. Um, so it's. It's not too unexpected, I think. Um, I've not actually watched either of their games, to, to be honest. Um, but I'm just off bits that I've seen or heard. It just seems like it's quite structured in the same, same old sort of Ireland. So, um, which it works for them, I suppose, sometimes. So, um, we'll hopefully have something to counter that at the weekend. So, what's the chat like? Go out and try and. You know, start the game well, try and keep it under 30 for the first half and then, you know, try and um, yeah, put a few consolation tries in the, the, the second half. 40, I'm just going to be going for drop kicks, kicks try to get in. <laughs> this is what we get every week, Finn. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. It's in Scotland though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it should, that's a, an achievable goal, keeping it under 30, isn't it? That's <laughs> <laughs> not about you at the end of you know? <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Serious again. Serious. We both both remember when uh, when we played you over in what Ravenhill, I think, Zeke, didn't we? Mm, yeah. Both remember that game. I've actually got a good photo that I could show you of it. You <laughs> both thinking. No, he's trying to claim it's not him, but it looks very much like him. <laughs> he tried to he tried to act as if he had no memory of that when I brought I it up as well, and he just was yeah. like, "What game was that?" Like as if he had completely forgotten about it. Right. Which, sorry, which game are we talking about? Oh come on! Don't give us that. The greatest day in Glasgow's history. When we won, the, when we won the Pro Twelve and that hammered Munster over in. Uh, oh, in oh, I got really confused because I was like, "Why was it in Ravenhill?" All right, okay, fair enough. Yeah, no, that was a good day. But yeah, he, he manages to forget that one every time we bring it up. Just I'm sure you it. can be selective in your memories too, Ryan. So thanks, yeah. Christina. Yeah, well, hey. we'll move on. Well, Finn, look, as a fellow ten, I do have to ask you. How did you react to the Billy Burns incident earlier in the tour in the tournament? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a tough kick. You, you've kind of got to go for the well, kind of got to go for the five there. You want to get as close as you, as you can. Um, but then at the same time, I suppose the main thing there is just to make sure you get it into touch and give your team a chance. Um, so I understand why he's gone for the five, and that's a thing that Ireland do. They always try and really push the boundaries and get as close to the five as possible. Um, so maybe that's something they, you know, they practice after training is kicking it four to five and not just looking to go a bit safer when it's ten meters out or, or whatever. So I think he's, you know, he's probably just thought it gets close as possible, or maybe just miss hit it or just not follow through correctly. And you know, it's an easy mistake to make. I miss one one to touch at the weekend. Most weekends I miss one to touch. So I don't really think anything of it. Um, we actually sometimes bring Zeebs in to kick for us, which, which says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to stop you this weekend when Billy Burns comes on second half to put one in touch. You're going to be screaming. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, touch, be 
comes on, I'll be giving out coming to the game, don't worry. Yeah, exactly. It's well, been really mighty, Ryan. we ahead by then anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> you with the Republics. <laughs> no, you're right enough. Ireland will be going really well. They beat Italy away or home, was it, I think? So. Away. Oh, there's a... <laughs> yeah, they're flying at the moment. That's, that's, uh, that's them full of confidence now, so... No, Finn isn't happy on the pitch. Finn's all right. He just goes about his business. He'll have the wee cheeky comment here and there. Yeah, a little bit. No, there's always a bit of banter that going on on the pitch and a bit of crack, so um, that'll be going on again. You know, me and my old mate Sexton will probably have a bit of chat in the pitch, see who he's getting on. Yeah, go, buddy. So, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to bend down and tie his laces. He's getting that old now, so. <laughs> <laughs> He'll hate, he will hate you because see when Finn plays, he enjoys himself. You've seen Sexton on the field. You and Johnny would actually really get on, I, know, I, I always say to him, I always say to him, like, they're complete opposites on the pitch. Like, Johnny's the complete nerd and, like, completely focused. And Finn's just, you know, just uh, off the cuff, happy, enjoying himself, you know. And But off the pitch, they're quite similar, you know. They love the slag. He, he's the same as you, I'm telling you. Well, not the same, but yeah. um, similar crack. He'd get on really well. I mean, it's, it's funny because you and Wilson, like, you've never got on, obviously, until this podcast. And I said I said to Zeeb, like, you'll get on well with Wilson. You'll get on really well with him. And, and Zeeb's follows him on Instagram. And what was it? Within 30 seconds, you had texts from your mates. On yeah. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Shocking, I was, mate. I for, for Wilson, I was like, he's actually a good guy. I know you don't like him on the pitch, but he's a good guy off the field, you know? Oh, okay, yeah. were you were yeah. you responsible for putting them in touch? Didn't you? Did you? Did you call Ryan or something and give the phone to Zeebs or you set us up? Probably something. Like yeah. That. <laughs> it's probably I mean, been a few years having a laugh saying about how Zeebs doesn't get on or with Wilson or it's just that I suppose rivalry on the pitch and then mm. we just I don't know. Yeah, been the the connection there. I think you were steaming at the time, and I was hanging off the roof up here, building the building the house, and you boys. Yes. Were like, oh yeah, I may be right. Was that I remember, I was yeah. There? <laughs> there. So when I when I was in the pissing rain building this house, right, I was I was like up to my neck in shit, like just going for it. And every every couple of days, Finn would phone me from like south of France, in the sunshine, down at a beach bar. How's it going? Well, is building going all right? And there I was, like hammer in hand, going at it. That was my lockdown. He was enjoying it. So that's where, yeah, that's where I think it was. Yeah. Cool. That's, uh, Zeebs, that's your, uh, when Cremo was down there as well. Mm. So I was down there, Zeebs' mate. And, um, that's it. He told me that you were, uh, you were told you weren't allowed by the missus. <laughs> I was allowed. I was allowed. <laughs> I'm the boss. <laughs> Well, Finn, I'll just we'll bring it back now to some more rugby chat. So I want to know what's the worst memory um, of an unforced error that you made um, that had such in, a big impact on the game? Uh, I know you said you kick into touch the odd time, but biggest error, I don't know. Um, well, I dropped one at the weekend, and I was going to put Zeebs clean through, so that's mm. an error because Zeebs got two tries at the weekend. So thanks for that, bro. On that, no, um. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, maybe the, the final European Cup I threw an intercept, which they then scored off. That'd be a big mistake, but I suppose it kind of happens. Um, I don't know. I can't really think of any specific ones that that really stick out to mind. There's, they won't stick in his mind because he just shrugs them off. Yeah. I was just about to say, yeah, you don't seem like someone who would think about it for too long after. Um, Life goes on with folks in their zebes and see if they, they can think of any that, that I've done when I've been playing with them. Um, no, the only one I'll think the, the big mistake you made was when you carried that ball in Connor and got absolutely sparkled. No, I, I went for a tackle. Oh, that was it. No, sorry, yeah, making a tackle and you got absolutely <laughs> sparkled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then from then on, you were like, right, I ain't getting anywhere near that. What happened? You you tried to hit someone and you swung around and smacked one of our own players, didn't you? Not <laughs> yeah, um, that was the first minute of the game. Was it semi final? Was it a quarter final? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Over there. yeah. and. They they kicked off to us. Um, I then kicked out their line out. I think they went seven man, and Bundyaki came down into the seam between ten and the line out. So I went to tackle him and kind of had an arm on him, but I sort of spun round to then be facing the line out, but still holding on to him. And then Big Xander Ferguson came out the back of the line out and took me out instead of instead of Bundy. So his head hit my my head as well. So that was a bad one. Eh? You were in you were in hospital for a while. Yeah, though, I got, got five fractures um, and a few like internal bleed things, but. Um, Jeez. I think I still managed to get up, but Xander was still on the ground with a concussion. So that's that all about Xander. 
and that's why he talks funny now. Yeah. <laughs> what about Zeebs and Ryan? What about like, is there what's the worst memory you guys had uh, or have of, of an unforced error that you have made on the pitch? Or are these things you just would prefer to actually just not talk about? Like, are these the things that you just kind of do brush off? No, you, you don't mind. I, I'd be like Finn. I I brush it off as well. <clears throat> I wouldn't um, hold on to too many negative things like that, but um, I can't really think. Yeah, I, I don't know. I usually don't make mistakes, so. <laughs> You're not long enough to make a mistake, that's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, I do actually remember one I just thought about there. Um, when we were playing France, I don't know if you were playing Wilson, when Vern was the coach, played France over there. We just scored under the post and I, I went to hit the the conversion and the ball started falling so I still tried to follow through with the kick and almost took Gil Fico's head off and put the ball under the bar from right oh, yeah. the post. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well oh, Finn, at the time um, when the outbreaks in the French camp were just announced uh, but yeah the game was still you know set to go ahead were you guys worried about playing that fixture? Um, I wasn't too fast. Um, I think they, they were testing every day um, so it was you know, if they, if they were going to get anything, they would have found out that week, um, which is what happened, obviously. Um, and it play, I was chatting to a few of the, fr- the racing boys who were at or in the squad, and they were saying they were just isolating in their, their rooms and stuff. So I wasn't too too worried about it as it had been kind of 10 days before they'd obviously gone into isolation and been in, been testing every day. So, you know, if the game would have gone ahead, it would have been pretty safe with all, all the tests that had, had taken place. And what was the mood like in camp? What was the mood like in camp pre-postponement? Um, well, we were just preparing as normal. You know, we had to just imagine the game was going ahead. So I think on the Tuesday they said, right, they've got no negative tests, game's going to go ahead. And then the Wednesday or the Thursday, I can't remember, they then had a positive. So um, we kind of got our big session on the Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, the Wednesday they'd been got our big session out of the way. And then maybe, like I say, maybe the next day we got told it was... It was cancelled, so um, yeah. For us, we were preparing fine, you know, as we would have normally for the game. And then after it, all the exiles were still there because we were meant to be playing that weekend. So you know, we were hoping that we'd you know, have a few beers and just chill out because the weekend was cancelled. Um, but then we trained on Friday morning, I think. So we had to train Friday Friday morning instead of having a, a weekend off. Raging. But do you know now if Racing are going to allow you to be released to to play the postponed fixture? I'd imagine so. If the French boys are being released, then for me it should probably be the same rule. I think um, I think the French, well, the FFR, they're going to have to pay each club individually for the, um, the different amount of players they have out. So I think for me it'll be fine playing in France, but for the boys in England or in Scotland, it might be slightly different for them. I don't know what the, the RFU or what the Premiership are demanding. Um, for, for the players to be released um, so yeah I think it's for, for France it's, they're saying go ahead the 26th but it's not been fully organised yet with the, the English teams I don't think anyway Well then, who has impressed you the most in Scottish camp this campaign I'm going to say apart from yourself um, who else is there um, Ryan Wilson actually he trained really well against them <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, how how good was like, that day? <laughs> that day, I tell you. Right, I don't know what I don't know what's happened. Like Tooney, Tooney was there as well, and he saw the train like that. I don't know how he didn't then pull me in. I don't know who across Glasgow Warriors and trained yeah, against the Scotland boys, taking boys' heads off. But um, what they call somehow. Oh no, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And I sure made them as laugh on the other side because when you obviously go over train Glasgow versus Scotland. And I'm on the other side. Literally, any little defensive drill that we won. Oh, Glasgow win. Come on, boys. I try to wind them up. <laughs> you see Gregor in the background getting annoyed. Oh, I know. No, it was a funny session, but Wilson was top trainer that day. Um, who else has impressed me? Like Cam, Cam was really good, actually, when he came in. He was he was pretty professional, but chilled out. Knew all his stuff, good skills, like he told in that game. Um, Chris Harris has been really good for us this year. Um, in defence mainly, uh, but in attack he was pretty good against Wales. And then, I don't know who else, Big Doo and the winger. I only first met him in November and, you know, before we came into camp, I'd, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been his biggest fan. Um, Why was that? 
I suppose look at him if you're, when we were playing for Glasgow, he's for Edinburgh. You're looking at him thinking, who's this guy? You know, <laughs> like, sort of walking around thinking he's it. And all right, chopper on the field, eh? I know. So I've had a couple of goals that I'm on the pitch, wound him up a few times, which is quite funny. But then um, coming in here, um, after the the Georgia game, I had a few beers and I just got on with them really well. Um, so he, he's quite a nice guy, actually, a, a really nice guy. Um, and I think the first thing he said to me was just give me the ball and I'll sprint. <laughs> <laughs> which I found hilarious and I was like, right, well, if you want the ball, I'll, I'll give it to you, don't worry. I was going to say, how do you boys communicate with each other? Because his English is pretty ropey and, and your Scottish is pretty broad, eh? Well, it's just simple. I just give him the ball and he sprints. There's nothing much nothing much else to say, you know? <laughs> he's a big old man, isn't he? Um, but no, he, he's, he's been good for us this year. Um, obviously powerful and quick, which is which is helpful. Um, so, yeah, he's got a couple of good tries already. So, hoggy has been on form as well. Um but no, I think you're quite what are you laughing at there, Simon. Nothing. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> it's seldom you'd hear someone call him Simon as well. I know, yeah. Very funny. Call him Simon. <laughs> it's me, Simon Z, boy. <laughs> Continue, Christina. Next question. I see, see, Finn, some of the youngsters, because you've been pulling in all the boys from Glasgow, left, right, and centre, but some of the youngsters that are coming, the likes of Dobby and that, how's he getting on? Yeah, no, he's he's been good. Um, he's, it's tough because he's not really had much of a run with the obviously the, the starting teams. Um, but no, he's a good trainer. He's, he's quite quiet, but I think he just he's kind of doing his own thing, which is good. He's been decent. Um, I, I don't cross over with many of the forwards. Um, I mean, you for, you forget how young these boys are. Finn. Like it's funny yeah. hey, when you when you talk about Cam Redbrath and you say, oh, you know, he's a good kid. Yeah, when I hear Finn right, say right. this bloke's a good kid, that makes me feel bloody old. I was sat with. Gregor Brown on the way back from the game we played when we played Zebra he, yeah. he bless him this is his first start for the club um, he got knocked out and tore his MCL all in one going three yeah, minutes geez. into the game for his first start bless him but sat chatting to him on the plane on the way back 19 years old and I was like he was born in 2002 and me and Big me and Big Naxi were sat next to him on the plane and Max is like Bruh, you know how old this boy is <laughs> <laughs> At 19 years old, like that makes me feel old. So some of these young boys coming in, hey, they're like Rufus McLean as well. He was with you boys full time. Yeah, no, what? Good. Sorry, what? Who? <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? Rufus <laughs> McLean. Rufus. God, his parents gave him no chance anyway. <laughs> his name's Rufus, and he came in at camp, and then um, I wasn't here. This uh, is good. So and Sean Maitland was, I like, didn't know his name or forgot what his name was. So he just started calling him Fergus. He was like, Yeah, Fergus, the ball, Fergus. <laughs> and everyone was like, Who's Fergus? So and I that's stuck with him back at Glasgow. We call him Fergus in Glasgow now. Fergus now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. the poor guy. All right, we'll move on. Um, Finn, Scotland had an incredible start to the campaign. So, how did you guys celebrate beating England at Twickenham for the first time in decades? Like, what took place that night? <laughs> Decades! My favourite podcast ever. <laughs> They're useless. How many, how many times in the last four years, Finn? Three, three times you got that cow cut cup. Wind yeah. it in, Christina. Yeah, I've won it. What? Finn, you've never lost the game, have you? The cow cut cup was created, so you'd have something to celebrate, but she never win. Oi, right, let's see who's laughing after this weekend. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. <laughs> oh, dear. I've never seen you both this excited. Oh, man. Be in here to ration. That's that. Uh, no, we didn't do much after it. You know, we had the flight straight back up the road. Um, nothing nothing was open. I think two years before that, and then the, the year we won it up in Scotland was, was bigger celebrations. But um, I think it was, it was almost not, not flat after everyone was happy, but because you have to fly straight back up the road, there's there's not really much you can do. You know, you have a couple of drinks in the changing room, then you, you get in the bus to go. So um, it wasn't the sort of partying that I'd have hoped for. But, um, you know, I tried to get it going, but it's, you're, you're limited when you're on a plane. <laughs> we'll, save, we'll save it for next weekend, or for this weekend coming, I think. We'll save it. Mm, um, what about when um, you guys won it two years ago with Ryan? What were the celebrations like that night? Two years ago, we drew it. That's basically winning for you, though. 
But whenever you did win it, what, we, what were the we, celebrations? We retained like? it two years ago. We won no. it three years uh, ago. Ah, uh, yeah. At Mario Field Finn. Yeah, yeah. That was the day you did the look, the no look pass, and you had that big comeback, wasn't it? No, no yeah, that was two years ago. Mm. That was a cool you know, game. That was a big long ball. Ah, yes. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. That was great game too. Three years ago was uh, in Murrayfield. That was a that was a good night off, Finn. Yeah, that was good fun. Just an hour. I remember my old man in the in the club in his flip flops. Do you remember that? that <laughs> Slapping them together and then walking around in bare feet in a nightclub in Edinburgh. Oh, wow. He had his pajamas on as well. It did. It pretty much did, didn't he? No, that was good fun. That was obviously the first time we'd run it for a while. So I think um, obviously the videos were out and about there of Reed Greig. But he he enjoyed it the most, I think. So He definitely did. No, it was good fun. I've, I've had quite a few nights like that in Paris after big wins, but... Um, I'm still waiting for Zeebs to be allowed out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get on to your Paris night out in a, in a little while, so Zeebs, you can have your, your saving line then. Um, but I suppose, Finn, in that game against England, like you were seriously pulling the strings at 10, but unfortunately then suffered a little hiccup-sized, you know, yellow card. Um, talk us through your recollection of that incident. Like uh, what was going on? I think... Um... The new rules off the line out there, we're still getting used to them. You've got to be back for a lot longer than normal. So I think teams now will start attack. You know, you've got to stay back for, I don't know, pretty much until the ball's out nowadays on the mall. Um, so if you go, it's how it's always been, but there's reffing it more now. Um, so I was probably a little bit too wide on that, which then gave Young's the inside line. Then I was thinking about going out and then thought, I've got to now tackle him. So I'll just say I got caught off balance and then. My leg got in the way. I was just like, hang on. I, I, yeah, I, was, I, was, so I thought it was fine. I kind of thought we were talking about two different instances there. Because I was like, hang on, did you not just trip someone? Was that not what you did? It yeah, is, yeah. That's, I'm explaining what, what happened, what we went through it, you know, the process of uh, the trip. Well, it was called a trip, but I don't know. I had, I had you, an arm. Yeah, yeah, you hit your arm out. It's a tackle. I had my arm out. And you hit your leg as you hit your arm. So it's a tackle. I mean, I've definitely, I, I loads of fullbacks tackle like that when it's one on one at the end, you know. Even be able to explain that tackle technique to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way. To the kids out there that don't want to put their head near it. Just exactly. So, um, <laughs> nah, yeah, it's got caught off balance, and uh, I don't know how my, my studs must have been long enough. My foot just slipped off the surface and, and caught his legs. Hmm. So mm. okay. that stems from that injury back in Connacht, mate. That's why. That's where we're going. With it. <laughs> it does, yeah. I'm just a bit hesitant about that link zone there. Exactly. <laughs> Well, Finn, what have your thoughts been on England so far this tournament? Have you been surprised by their selections or maybe lack thereof? Um, again, I've actually not watched them apart from before we played them. Um, so I'm not too sure how, they, how they've been playing. I've seen the results. Um, again, they beat Italy, I think, didn't they? Second, was that the second game? Yeah. 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 And then they lose to Wales. Yeah. So now nah, I don't know. It seems like they're. Their, their normal um, game plan of kicking it and backing their defence just hasn't really been working for them. Um, I don't know what it is. They're just not quite the same team as they were a couple of years ago. Um, I'm not sure if that's from their attack or defensive side or, or whatever. It's just something that's not, not right there. You know, they've got world-class players from 1 to 23, um, but they're just not clicking clicking together yet as a team. So um, hopefully when they play France, they can, they can do them so we can... We can win the next three games and win the tournament, eh, Simon? <laughs> if you win the tournament, I, I, <laughs> you're what? 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 I don't know. <laughs> I have to be very careful. Oh, yeah, I, I don't reckon, really. Oh, I can bet there. Oh, there's. Yeah. Yeah, no, why did you go yeah, now? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be up. For, I wouldn't be um, opposed to a wager. So, what would the wager be, Ryan? What, what, do you about, what about a little wager for this weekend between you two? Yeah. For sure, no problem. What are we say? Under 30? You've got to come on a night out in Paris. If they lose. Ah, sure, no. No, I don't know. Can't do that, it's no, COVID, he's not man. that. I won't get out. The place is on lockdown. He's <laughs> more valuable than anything. Uh, I don't know. If you lose, you have to go up and give Johnny Sexton a kiss or something. I don't know. You <laughs> oh, have to God. go over and befriend him. You've got to go over and tie his boots. Which yeah, do that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know well, what about say. yeah? What about if um uh yeah? If you lose, you have to fin. You have to get a picture with Johnny for your Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Like I'm around him. Right, yeah. and then 
we win, what happens then? Oh, I didn't really think that. that That's not going to happen. Yeah, or, I was like, uh, in case it does. Um, Zebo, you might have to go on a night out with me. No, okay. no, 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 no. It needs to be something like a picture under the Eiffel Tower with a kilt on. Fair enough. Top no off. problem. No, there's no off. problem. No problem. Naked. Well, everyone, just the kids. Yes. <laughs> well, there you are. Then. Right. Are we happy Finn, with that? Then you need to take a kilt back. Then give him a kilt, and he has to get a picture underneath That's, the Eiffel Tower. Just do you actually kilt. think you're going to win? Of course we do. Even Finn doesn't believe he's going to win. But <laughs> <laughs> and you're not even the squad. Like, come on. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're all liars. You're all liars. <laughs> Gonna get a hiding. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that picture with Johnny. Got to get the best out of him. So say that again, Finn. Say that again, Finn. Got to get deep his confidence up to get the best out of him. So <laughs> this is a chat comes along with. I don't really say much back. I leave it be just so that the weekend we're ready to go. So mm. I think see, Zeb, you'll probably back me up on this. Like one thing, you see players start performing badly when they're not enjoying it, mm. and I think that's one thing you'll notice with Finn when he plays. He, he look. He shows it in the way he acts, his face, everything. He just enjoys himself, and I reckon that's why you're playing so well at the moment because you're enjoying yourself and you're full of confidence because of that. And Zebes, you probably back me up, but when a player is not happy or you know struggling with something, then that's when they start underperforming. But if you're happy, you know, on and off the field, then there's nothing to worry about when you get on that field and you just let yourself go. Eh? And I reckon that's what Finn's doing. Hey, Good that's time. what I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big time. It's all about enjoying yourself. Yeah, spot on. And why chat it's all about uh enjoying himself on the pitch and he has coaches here racing who back him and you know give him the license to go out and express himself and um as he was saying for myself, Virami, these guys outside him. Um, you know, it's always nice linking up with him and getting the offloads, the big passes when he's in a good mood. He, they're always a little bit more accurate when he's in a good mood. And also, I suppose it goes back and look off the field. Like if coaches let you be the person you are off mm. the field and don't try and hold you back, then that's another big thing. And I reckon that thing with Toonies obviously helped there, Finn. And yeah. that's probably one of the other big reasons, you know, you're not being held back off the field and, and it shows in, in the way you're playing. So, hey, that Lions jersey is your son. Well, speaking Easy. of the Lions, speaking oh. of the Lions, Finn, you did get a taste for it when you were called up mid-2017 tour in New Zealand. <laughs> Um, how special was that experience? <laughs> he was there for two and a half days. <laughs> Let him have it. He still was there. He still got called up. <laughs> <Go away. laughs> Wait, two and a half days is better than never at all, Finn. Exactly. You, <laughs> Wilson, <laughs> what was that? No, oh, I said two and a half days is better than nothing at all. Yeah. I think was there for, well, what was it, 10 days or something? And pretty much as soon as we got into camp, they were like, yeah, you're only here for 10 days and you're flying back. So it was kind of different, obviously. It was, it was obviously class to go, but you're only there, like, so for 10 days just to fill in the mid midweek, you know. Um, I think it was only me and Alan Dell that actually got on just because of injuries. But without that, we wouldn't have got on at all. Um, but I think, yeah, I was pretty excited to get over there. But then once you got there, you realise, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm here for 10 days. I'm. I'm after the first game, when we were like 34 nil up or something, they still didn't put anyone on. Mm. Then you're kind of like, oh, we're probably not even going to get a game. We're just here to train and kind of hold shields if we need to. Um, so that was very different. You know, Zeebs, you've done one already. Um, but that, that was different, getting called out to it. And I know there's a lot of <clears throat> media around that when the Welsh boys got called out and the two of us from Scotland got called over. Um, it was kind of like... You're just the guys who are close to the area, so that's why you're flying out. It's not because of anything else. So, um, no, it was, it was good to do it, but if, if, if I could go on a, a full one, it would be be a lot better, I think. Where were we, Finn? Were we over in Oz at that time? Yeah, we played in Singapore, then Australia. And then oh, Australia. oh, yeah. And, yeah, you played in the Oz game, didn't you? Yeah. How good was that trip, eh? Singapore, Australia, okay. and then you missed out on Fiji, didn't you? Yeah, that was, that was the one game I wanted to play in because it was in Fiji I've never been. Yeah, and I played Fiji and I had to leave the day after the, the Australia game. That was e easily one of the best tours I've been on. We did yeah. Singapore and played Italy, didn't we? And then Australia beat Australia and then went over to Fiji and ended up losing against the Fijians. But oh, what a place, man! That was a that was a good trip. That one. Yeah. 
say uh, even your mini Lions tour, like what was like, even if you were only there for the 10 days, what was the crack like when you were there? You know, like, did you get to go on any nights out or? Oh yeah, I think I went on about four. <laughs> four and two and a half days. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think because we were obviously in the, the sort of the second squad that was the first night I got there, we had captains on the next day, then went into a game. And then after the game, they were having beers on the bus back up from, fuck, I don't know, Waikato, I think, back to Auckland. And then they said, if you want, you can go out, you're off tomorrow. So a few of us went out. Um, and then the next day we trained and then it was a team dinner the next day. And he'd obviously got on and named his squad for the for, for the first test. And he was like, well, boys who aren't in the squad, you can sit here as a free bar if you want to drink here and do what you want. So we sat there and had a drink um, after that. And then trained one day, then it was captain's run day, so we were off or something. And then went out after the test and then went out after the, the last game that we had. So it was kind of, I don't know, it was a weird situation because you know better than me, but there was like a 23 that were for that were for the test and a 23 that mm. was like not for the test. So you're kind of on your own schedule compared to the, the 23. Yeah, it's different. The tour. The dirt trackers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> What was your best? What was your best? Like out of those four nights now, what was the best night out that you had with the guys? Um, can't remember any of it. <laughs> they all blurred into one. No, we, we had one night. We went to some Irish pub that was in the harbour. Um, and we ended up bumping in. I bumped into a couple of Scottish girls that we were air hostesses with with Emirates, and they were like friends of friends, which was random. But that was quite a good laugh, a good night out. Um, and then the second one. Steve's giggling there. I'm mad. The second one, my mates, my mates actually came over for it for it for the ten days. So my mates came over and then had a night out, met up with them, which was a good laugh. And then the last one was good because, like, some of my mates were there as well, so we had a, a big big night then. And that was when um, oh I met Cali that night, Wills. Yeah. Because he was playing at um at Hurricanes at the time, so I met him, Cam Gibbons, and. I didn't didn't know him, but I knew he was coming to Glasgow, and he had a mullet at this point. So I grabbed his mullet for a laugh, and his mate like grabbed me, thinking I was being serious. <laughs> and he was like, "No, nah, no, nah, he's all good, he's all good." You know, they're not both them out, obviously, but <laughs> yeah, of course he would. Of course he would. Well, Finn, for the upcoming tour, everyone is calling for you to be starting fly half. Um, have you allowed yourself to dare to dream? Uh you know, it's just going in the back of them. Most boys playing in this tournament back back of their heads, but you know you could have a great tournament and then you never know what's going to happen the next couple of months. So there's no point in getting too carried away with it. Um, you know it's it's nice to have that sort of what do you say that folk talking you up a bit of confidence and a pat in the back almost. But you know you don't know what we've still got three tests to go then the whole season with Rasen. So you know I think we might we might have about another fifteen games if not more to play. So. Um, I still have a lot, a lot to go on before the actual tour, even if you get an initial squad like we saw last year, some boys had to pull out with injury or, or other things outside of rugby. So um, getting in the, in the squad, initial squad is one thing, but it's still a long way away yet. So we'll see. Fair enough. Definitely, yeah. though, you're the, you know, and I know, you're the number one starting 10 going on that tour. You don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. I'll say it for you. But yeah, it's mad how you go from two and a half days on one tour <laughs> to four years later producing all the form and all the tries, assists, everything. Been sure, the yeah. most people would say like with your name, people would have attached consistency to your name and said, "Oh, he's not consistent," you know, when he's when you were coming up. But in the last four years since that last tour, it's not even a question, man. Number one fly half in the world. So yeah, baby. Two and a half days to number one, baby. <laughs> big call outside, man. Just chuck a long ball to Zeebs, let him go. That's it. <laughs> well, that's the interesting thing. People are talking I about. I the tour. If I go, I need him to be outside me, obviously. So. Exactly. Yes, correct. We come as a package. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, have you seen my Guardians? <laughs> I'll, I'll look after you, mate. They, they talk about, you know, like putting these guys in that aren't even playing at national rugby. Do you reckon they watch my game against Zebra? 100%. Surely they were. Yeah. I think you should send a highlights uh, highlights rule from that training session against the Central. <laughs> a few oh. off the ball hits. I'll tell you what, 
Oh, we, we, forgot, we forgot about this bit as well. Would you reckon the boys from um, Saris will be sending their clips in from Cornish Pirates at the weekend? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How good is it watching them lose in the championship? Oh, oh man. It's that whole place so to go. Good. Obviously, like Duncan Taylor and Sean Maitland are here and they got in on a Sunday, same as me. And I was like, oh, what happened to you boys at the weekend? And they were just like, don't even talk to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were saying that they won three lineouts out of 10 and only one of them was like clean ball. And out of nine scrums, they lost eight of them or something. Mad. Who's running Who's running the line at? Swino? <laughs> Big Swino. Have you heard of nicknames? <laughs> no. So, Swin Diesel. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, he threw an awful out the back one day in training and they started calling him Swin Russell <laughs> Sam tonight there's another one I think oh my god yeah that that yeah. is so funny eh? like hey listen we've all been down in Cornish Parks and lost I remember going down there with Mosley and losing back in very the- tough place to go on tough place to go <laughs> so good Right, well, we'll move on. So, Finn, you've had a bit of a colourful relationship with Gregor over the years. And um, there's still a lot of Chinese whispers regarding what actually went down during that late night drinking session. So can you set the record straight on what actually happened that night? It wasn't a late night drinking session. I was home by, uh, you know, my mum and dad just like 45 minutes away. So they, I, I got them to come and pick me up, which I, which I left the hotel. Um, but that was like half 11 that they picked me up. So it wasn't really a late night drinking session. Or it wasn't for me anyway. For Zeebs, it might be a late night drink. <laughs> Very late night for me. <laughs> Finn, I didn't want yeah, you to clarify the late night part. I wanted you to clarify what actually happened. <laughs> you declare, oh, um, oh, we just played Saracens and I think the last game of this, the, the, the group stages of Europe and we'd just been beaten by them. Um, I think we played 13 games in a bounce and I came up here and wanted to have a few drinks. And... The folk had decided we're only to have two drinks after the game, and I was just like, nah, if I want to have a drink, I'm just going to have a drink just now because I've just played 13, a big loss, emotions are high, and all that stuff. And the relationship wasn't probably the best, you know, before that. It wasn't just a one event that, that happened. So there'd been a build up that sort of the camp wasn't probably as happy as it is now. Um, <clears throat> and I think I don't know, after that, I just, I just kind of had enough. I was like, nah, I'm a. Uh, I'm going to take a step back just now and just see, uh, you know, kind of walk away from it at that time. Um, but it's probably the right thing for me to do. I just, well, I didn't really enjoy it and uh, well, I wasn't happy when I was back here. I wasn't playing good rugby. You know, even when I went back to Rasson, it was still having an effect on me over there. So um, I think obviously having a few drinks, it kind of heightened the, the emotions go alongside it. But um, I just, uh, yeah, I just sort of left and got myself out of there because I didn't want to be in the hotel at that point. So, um and then everything then kind of got spun on its head and when the, all the the media stuff came out, it was kind of their side, my side and all that, like like what it is these days. But um, it's all fixed now and uh, we've moved moved forward, moved a long way past that. So mm. like I said before, it's probably been the best thing that, that probably could have happened for me and, and Gregor's relationship. Um, you know, I got on with him actually pretty well now, um, which is good. And, you know, I think a year ago, I was looking at the point thinking I'm never going to play. If he's a coach, I'm never going to play with him again. Um, mm. I'm like, I'm done with him. I'm not going to play again if he's still the coach. So we kind of worked on it through the summer and, and then came back in in November. I'm still a bit skeptical, skeptical when I came back in, but um, no, nah, it's, it's credit to him actually. He's, he's changed a lot and he's he's got the group a lot more relaxed and, and playing well. So um, he, he's changed a little bit and so have I, and you know, so, so has everyone. So we're in a much better place now and, and, We'll show that this weekend. See, well, not this weekend, but fair play to him for changing, though. You know, it takes, you know, it's easy for coaches like that in that situation to have a big ego and just push that player to the side. Yeah. You know, so um, fair play to him and yourself for. No, I think you've you probably had um, coaches like that in the past, we'll say. Um, probably, yeah. Control and want it as however they want it, and they don't take into, into mm. account every player's different. and. Uh, and they kind of think their way is right no matter what. So, like I say, I think um, Gregor has changed a lot and it's it's been so much better, this, this camp that I've been in. Even in November, it was a lot better. And, and just now it's great. Um, chatting to most of the boys there and they're loving it, you know. And Gregor, yeah, I was surprised. He actually put me back in the leaders group. He had me as vice captain for the last game and stuff. And so it shows how far we've come in a year's, a year's time from 
from me walking away thinking I was never going to play under him again, or not never wanting to play under him again, to, to where we are now. So it's, you know, it's gone like a full 360 and, and it's been really good. Finn, of all the players now that you've played with, who would you say is the best value on a night out and why? Um, Do you ever go on nights out with him, Zeeves? Come on, why, chat? I think we've been on three or four nights out. <laughs> go away. When Zeeves is allowed out, he's, he's very good. good very good. Um, I'm because not, most of them are older than me. I've not had too many nights out with them. Um, and like I say, he's got kids, same as Zeebs. They both got kids, so um, you can still have children and still go out and have a night out. Well, that's yeah. what I tell them. You're right enough, but and I do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just might be home at midnight. That's all. <laughs> no, nah, Wilson's always a good laugh on a night out. Um, we were out one night and it must have been in Glasgow, I think. And Wilson had um, like a big long Parker jacket on, and. I remember it was like a cream coloured one, like beige sort of coloured one. And he had his hood right up over the top as well. And he was just like dancing around in a dance, like annoying folk almost. And I was never thinking, how is he? He still got a jacket on a club dancing around like that. He must be absolutely roasting. And you could just, like, I was standing watching it, like, knowing Wilson and kind of observing, just seeing, like, how annoyed people were getting around him. But he found it hilarious, which is that sort of Wilson on a night out, which is, which is funny if you're, if you're with them and you know what's going on, it's funny you can watch it. But if you weren't with them or didn't know them, it might not be as funny. I'll tell you one thing that I always know with Finn is wherever you go, he ends up ordering the most expensive drinks. And like that's when I start to get the panic because I'm I'm skimped most of the time. And he's all right, he's pretty flush. So Finn's calling in the bottle of the Don Perrin on left, right and centre, the bottles of Cristal. And I'm like, Finn, we're splitting the bill. And he's like, no, nah, I've got it, I've got it. And obviously the next day, everyone's like, Finn, you're not spending it all yourself. That's one thing I know about Finn. He, he likes to spend a bit of his uh, wonga, for sure. And he loves a good dance as well. This boy's got some dance moves He on does, him. doesn't he? he? To be fair, to him, he does. <laughs> he's not up there with your TikTok, Seebs, but he's, he's up there. <laughs> Thanks. I saw you. You made the jump. You made the move. You did. Did I see something recently Just, on your I Instagram? You know what? It was a sad thing, is it? It was more my daughter. She was going, Dad, why don't you get TikToks? So I said, I'll get it and have a look. I've only done one, and that'll do. Good man. More to come. Good man. Finn next. Nah. So <laughs> after becoming a Pro 12 champion, Racing came knocking. Can you take us back to the moment you received the offer? Um, well, I, I actually tried to leave Glasgow the year before to go to Montpellier because um, Vern moved from Scotland to Montpellier and he asked me to go there. So I tried to leave. <clears throat> the year earlier and then um, I think my dad actually around at that time or the year before said that he reckoned I'd go to Racing because Dan Carter was there he was getting a little bit older and um, to look for someone else after him um, I think I was 25 when I moved over um, so yes yeah, so I, I don't know there's a, when I came to the end of the contract I knew I kind of wanted to leave and try something out and I was looking more at France I didn't even look at the Premiership I didn't fancy that Um so, you know, a few clubs were interested, but um, no one really showed too much interest. I think because I was still playing international in France, it's, it's tough because they miss you for quite a large part of the year. Um, but Racing, they were they were keen and, um, you know, when offered the first deal, it was, you know, it was good. I, I was happy with that. Um, so it was, there you were. There you were. Um, so, no, no, it was good. It was a great club, obviously, and it was, you know, the reputation they have um, is great. And then I heard that old Jeeves was, was potentially signing there as well. So we spoke a few times and, and we had a, had a bit of chat before. Um, no, it was all good. Um, but no, I was happy to, to sign. But actually, the, the first day I turned up for them was um, was after the World Rugby Awards in Monaco that we also remember about. Um, and I had to get photos taken and do interviews and all that stuff. And... That was that was probably the toughest day I've had at Racing. <laughs> I, listen, I remember that morning when you left Monaco. Uh, nice <laughs> we we played against we played Australia, and yeah, then yeah. The, and the day so we went out, and then the day after, well, the morning after, it was like real early, wasn't it? Yeah. Pretty much carried straight on, straight on the flight, private jet put on by World Rugby down to Monaco, eh? and we had a pretty big session down there. But the day after. Finn was going to sign his contract. I, mean, I remember that taxi ride. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> and Finn came to the wrong terminal. That's that. I had to get our own taxi to the airport. Remember? 
Oh, yeah, that was it. That was it. But you went to the wrong terminal, didn't you? I could, you boys, you boys are flying back to Scotland. Like, oh no, you've got to get a train to the next terminal. And I'm like, what? Not a clue what was happening. A couple oh, of it was rough. You were rough that morning. You, you were going to sign your contract, weren't you? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I signed the pre-contract. I had to sign the full one <laughs> and get all the photos and stuff done. And I've showed you the photos, he was at the training mm-hmm. centre. We've all got a headshot with us holding a ball <laughs> at the training centre. And my one, oh, it's. Hanging. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of like, hey, start as you mean to go on, mate. <laughs> yeah. Start as you mean to go on. There, there, there's a few Russian boys that were at it. So, like, Ogara was there, um, Dan Carter. Big um, Joe. What's his name? Joe Rococo, Chris Masoy, they were all there. And yeah. then I, I got into Russian the next day and I was like, oh, hi, how are you getting on? You're right. And they're like, oh, yeah, good night last night, was it? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, it was all right, I suppose, yeah. I couldn't remember meeting him or anything like that. Oh, God. Um, and the funniest one of that was I was in a place close to the training centre called So. And Ron Logara, that's where he lived. And his wife was there with the kids. And she was like, oh, hey, how are you getting on? I'm like, oh, hi, Finn, nice to meet you. And she was like, oh, no, we've met before. And I was thinking, like, what's going on here? And I'm like, what? She was like, yeah, at the World Rugby Awards, I met you there. And I was just thinking, like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? Yeah. Oh, no. But, uh, that, was, that was a good night. Wilson, you were funny that night, actually. We were, oh, we, what was Ryan doing? I think at, actually at this ceremony, once it all kind of finished, he was up in the steps trying to get the mic or, or something, trying to sing me, you know? Yeah, I think I had a sing song on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> he got the world rugby thing. He got singing and then, uh, Held the high note and then the, did the mic drop. <laughs> did you actually? Yeah, I was quite drunk. That was a, It was a good day. We met up with a mate of mine. Remember Russell? Russell Crump. <laughs> Remember the, the yacht, the yacht, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and sad. went out. We went out before it on his credit card, didn't we? We got on that flight, right? We got on a private jet in the morning. Remember, John Eels was on there, Je- yeah. John Jeffries was on there, yeah. and it was me, you, Pricey, oh. and Hoggy, Mr. Serious. And we got on this private jet in the morning, and we we're all hanging like it was still pretty, it was still half cut. And Finn's opened up the, we're on this private jet, he's opened up the side thing. Whoever's plane it was, still had it stocked full of booze. So <laughs> pulled out like the, the Cavorsia at like eight in the morning. We had a full English breakfast with proper knives and forks and a plate on the plane, sipping at the Cavorsia on the, <laughs> on the plane. Do you remember? Playing, uh, playing Jim Rummy. All right, well, I want to talk a bit more about the rugby in France. What about in, with um, with Racing? Is there an, any sort of like initiation when you joined the, the club? Yeah, oh, we definitely. did remember. So, um, what because we were both there obviously at the same time. So, what we had to do was I think there's going to be 10 of us, so either academy boys joining the pros or new, new players going there. So, we got paired up with someone. Um, I got the guy, Olivier, Olivier Fleming Jack, and we had to do like almost like an obstacle course with someone blindfolded after a training oh, yeah. session. We had to like talk them through what they're trying to do. So, you know, when I got there, I couldn't speak French, you know, and I'm having to try and just talk this guy through the obstacle course. And it depends on how quickly you finish at your rank, you then picked out a hat or you, you picked a name on the board, but all the names were, they didn't, they were for an activity, but the activity wasn't what the name was. So um, me and Olivia, we had to, we, picked one that I can't remember what it was called but we had to go and take photos at five different landmarks um, in Grun and Georgia and in Tbilisi we had to go and just get a taxi around and take the five photos and that was us done so it was nice and easy um, some other boys had to do the big jump um, so that's after training we were on the bus and they're blindfolded from when they got off the pitch pretty much on the bus don't know where they're going to we end up driving to a, to a swimming pool and you get these guys still blindfolded, you're walking them in through the, the changing rooms and whatever, and you're trying to make it out as if, you know, they could be anywhere. Walking up to the diving board, it's only a few metres high. And then um, we're all kind of waiting, being, but being quiet, watching them do it. And then um, they don't have a clue how high they are, where they are, what's going on. All they know is that they've got to jump when they get told to jump, but not knowing what's happening. And so one of them got to the edge of the board and he was on like his hands and knees trying to feel in front of him <laughs> what was there. <laughs> and then obviously then just jump off without knowing and oh, it's so funny. Mm. But that, that was another one of them. But I can't, I don't know what you had to do, Zeebs. I can't remember what you had to do. I had um, 
a tasting competition, you know, where it was like squid and all these raw fish and, and stuff like that. Um, and a song, that was it. Yeah, there was the the Grand Saut or Le Grand Saut, as they say in French, the big jump was the best though. The boys crawling on the high board was unreal, yeah. Well, Finn, I think the next question I can very much direct at you from what you've said about Zebo and how he doesn't go on nights out. So how does a French rugby night out differ from one in the UK? I think it's just everything is later on. So you have a game, could be a seven o'clock game, nine o'clock game, whatever it is. Um, you tend to kind of book her somewhere for dinner after it. So you, you could go in and sit down at half twelve or ten o'clock. You have something with the French is a lot more like social after dinners and at lunches. They'll just sit for hours after chatting. Um, you know, you have a pre-match meal. They'll just sit for an hour after it chatting. Um, so over there, like you, you have your dinner, you have a few drinks, and then you just sit and chill in that restaurant after. And depending on which restaurant you go to, the vibe will be pretty good. Um, like Zebra's favourite restaurant, I think it's a place called Noto, mm -hmm. um, which is a nice restaurant. And then turns almost into a club after it. Um, so it's his favourite restaurant. He's only been there once though. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, are your, what are your favourite haunts in Paris, Finn? Um, Noto has to be up there. Yeah, Noto's good. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a, I think it's a chain of three restaurants that, like, say, they're, they're nice restaurants but then turn into sort of clubs after. They close at two and then you you go to the nightclub after that. So in Paris, it's like a long night of drinking. It's not going out and getting drunk quickly. It's a long night to, you know, continue through till six or whatever it is in the morning. But usually for me, if I've got one of these restaurants that turns into a club and have dinner and drinks there before going out to a club um, or if not I'll, there's a couple of boats that I like to go to on the Seine that look up the Eiffel Tower they're quite good vibes so maybe go and chill on them have a few drinks then head to the club after not quite a sanctuary eh, mate <laughs> not quite a sanctuary no but, uh, I, I've not found a casino yet in Paris so what? I uh, know I know so have you not? no nah, so I think the casino is only because sanctuary would shut it too so after that, you're like, oh, what are we going to do now? So you go to the casino because it's open till six. So. Yeah, yeah. In Paris, you don't really need that. Mm. Finn likes a good gamble. Are you gambling, man? Nah, I, no, I don't gamble anything on um, online or anything. Like I so said, just after nights out in Glasgow, you go to the casino and um, and play a bit of roulette. Yeah, you can get your stuff out of the locker and just... <laughs> well, Finn, look, along with representing the Lions and your country, you also played for the Barbarians in 2018 against England, which resulted in England's largest ever home defeat. Now, forget the match. And I bet you probably know where this one's going, but I do want to know what the, the famous Baba social life is like. So, like, what crazy things did you get up to in the evenings? I can see you smiling away here, so I hope there's a good story. No, um, I, well, I turned up I was just before when I was leaving Glasgow to go to Racing, and I'd got it all clear from Dave Rennie to go and stuff. We'd had our... Um, Awards dinner at Glasgow, and I wasn't actually going to be starting for the Barbarians. I, I'd, I'd spoken with Pat Lamb, and my agent was trying to set it up, and he was like, "We've not really got space for you just now, but if anything comes up, we'll let you know." So I was like, "Right, sweet, whatever." I'd been out for a couple of days after the, the end of season, and then he called me on the Monday saying, "Right, you're starting for us the next weekend," and I was sort of lying on my couch like, "Oh, I don't even want to go just now. I don't even. I'm too rough for it anyway." Um, <laughs> I flew down there and uh, we, Greg, Greg was in the squad as well, so I knew him, um, obviously. And I got down there and I was thinking, if Chris Ashton again was in the squad, I thought if I, if I, if I will share with anyone, it's like, I don't want it to be him. I just don't want to share with Chris Ashton. Mm. And then obviously I'm sharing with him. And we, we got on pretty well. But um, Now, why did you not want to share with Chris Ashton? And Zeebs, why did you agree? Is it like, am I missing something about him? Ah, uh, yeah, he, he wouldn't, you know, like if you don't know him, you 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 wouldn't like him you know just from there's few players like that you know it's not nothing of his fault it's just the way he plays and sometimes he can be a bit overzealous or you know come across a bit um i don't know uh, sure. too long he was his teammate in england and look what happened there yeah exactly yeah so they're like yeah i but i i actually spoke to him quite a few times and Seems like a really, really good fella. And uh, Finn vouched for him as well. And Yeah, nothing but good things to say about him. But I can understand why he wouldn't have wanted to room with him if he didn't know him. You know? Okay, so anyway, so then you roomed with him and you became uh, besties. Of course, that's what's happened. Anyway, um, I got down there and actually got a phone call saying, oh, like, you can't play for them. And I was like, why not? And they said, oh, well, because insurance-wise, you've not cleared it with SRU or something, whatever it was. And I was like, 
no, I thought it was all good. I'm, I'm like leaving them at the end of the year, but it's an issue. And Gregor told me I wasn't going on the summer tour um, and stuff. But anyway, all that got that got sorted out. But all we did was you'd go out after, you'd have dinner, then just go out for drinks. I'd have drinks at dinner. And then I think one of the guys who's in the committee or something, his son sort of organises the nights out. And he just kind of finds out numbers, how many of you are there. And how many like what you want to do in the night out he organizes it so you kind of go for dinner drinks have the the night out after get back in at whatever time you want <clears throat> pat lamb was a coach so he'd have us in for about nine o'clock every morning doing team meetings if you had a team meeting at nine o'clock you then train and then come back have the afternoon off and then you'd just repeat it again so um no it was good fun and um, we we had one night it was fancy dress and um we went to so we had, to, we had to go in, into London to get proper fancy dress. Like some boys spent a couple hundred quid on outfits and stuff and and whatever. They went to an, an Italian place. <clears throat> and I don't know if you know what Islanders are like, but they've always got music with them, Islanders. We had a speaker in this restaurant with us. And they're just playing music as normal. And there's three girls there that we didn't know at all. But they're like, they were with us, but we didn't know who they were. And, and they were like from, I don't know, the West End or Broadway, whoever it is. They were singers. So we didn't know that. And then halfway through the meal, they just... Like they stopped the music and then they, they got up and did a performance for us and everything and um and then we continued on with the night. We all then had a had a, a like a a club kind of thing booked out for us. Um so the the whole team went there, the players, staff, everyone went there and had a had a night out, which is good fun. Um but no, I think there's a few again a few islanders in the team that don't drink, so they didn't they didn't really come out as much. They just had Cava in the hotel. So it's kind of optional. Not you're not forced to do anything. It's more if you want to do it. And I think a lot of boys just enjoy kind of going out and having a laugh, having a drink, getting to know each other. Um, but Joe Takori, he was there, and it was his fifth time, I think. And he was saying that was the most serious that it's been since he's ever done it. So. Well, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'd love to do it. Remember, you boys house England, did you? Yeah, I didn't mm. have it. Yeah. But now it's funny. So we, we drank um, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um. Friday we didn't drink. I'd, we just drank. Oh, I drank Cava till we had like three in the morning on the Friday, and then we had, had a captain's walk through on the Saturday. I, loads of boys did that, and captains walk through on the Saturday, and then had to play on the Sunday. Um, and I remember in the warm up, it was like it must be thirty two or thirty three degrees maybe for the game, you know. And I was thinking, oh, this is a pre- this is pretty hot for a game of rugby today. And then I looked round and Sammy Radrada and um, and Josh took us over like. Nah, bro, it's too hot. We can't play in this. It's too hot. <laughs> Scotland, how, how can you complain about this being too hot? Like, what? <laughs> that, was, that was funny. James, yeah. how did you go about getting yourself now called up to the Barbarian squad? Like, what do you have to do? I, uh, I don't know. I'm available anyway. <laughs> as long as I'm injury free and stuff, yeah. I, I don't see why not. I'm not playing for my country, so hopefully... Uh, it's, 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 I think it's a little bit trickier being here in France, is it, Finn? Well, something said that last year about being released to play Babas for us. Depends how far you get in the tournament. They're like, there's the Claremont boys played in it the year that I was there because they'd been knocked out already. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were they were out of the top six and they never had playoffs. So then for timing wise, it, it fitted for them to play in yeah. it. Um, I don't know if it'd be like for you because you'll never play like 20 minutes a game. So I don't know if you're <laughs> or not. Chris, <laughs> I'm just wondering why you directed that only at Zeebs. Yeah. <laughs> obviously Wilson you'll be there That's yeah <laughs> again thanks very much <laughs> I'm sure they're, they're looking oh. for a rangy six slash very light eight that they would buy maybe one you yeah. never know yeah I'd, I think it'd be a great Barbarians if the three of you were playing I'd definitely watch it 100% hello yeah sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> Well, that is it from us. So thanks to Finn Russell, Brian Wilson and Simon Zebo, And thanks to you for listening. More offloading next week. So make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts so you get it as soon as it's released. Leave us a rating and review if you can. And don't forget to check us out on YouTube as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you.